Në vazhdim të programi do të flasim për një nga festat biblike, festa e borive që mund të jetë një nga festat më pak të një ura si ndër hebrejnë të ashtu dhe ndër të kryshtert. Madje dhe në Izrael, vetëm pak e njojnë këto fest me emrin e saj biblik, pasi mbulot nga festimi vit të ri hebrajik, i njohë gjërësisht si Rosh Hashana. Qëfar kuptimi ka kjo fest dhe cila është simbolika që mbartë? Ne jemi në studio me George Markakis, pastor, mësues Bible dhe drejtu e si shërbeses apostolike Shalom në Greqi. Mirë se Erdhe në studio. Thank you very much. I'm very happy to be here. Faliminderit. Qëfar të sjellë në Shqipëri? Pse i do ka që shumë Shqiptarët edhe eventin ton? Well, the Lord told me something one day that really surprised me. He said, adopt Albania. And I said, I don't even know what it means. And then he said to me, What happens when you adopt a child? You take a child that is not your own and you make it your own. You treat it like your own. So think of Albania as your own country and love it as your own country. And uh, then the Lord began to open doors for me to be coming here. I first came for prayer for Albania. At that time I met Pastor Barry Ogden And I became mm -hmm. friends with him and the IPA Tirana, the church. And then that became my home in Albania and Barry became my close friend. So we've been cooperating now for more than, I think, 11 years. And I've been coming quite regularly. This year, I think, is my fourth time in Albania. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, so I come to serve the people of Albania and the church. Lavdi Zotit. Pastor, na tërgo pak filimisht për shërbesën të ndë, cili është qëllimi, vizioni që ju keni për shërbesën apostolike shalom në Greqi? Well, when the Lord called me to ministry, it was a surprise for me, because I was, in, uh, I was an economist and I was in the marketplace. I was in the world of business. And then eventually the Lord called me to serve in the world of ministry, in the church world, And I've been ministering since 1997, so that's like 27 years now. And at some point I understood that my calling was more than in a local church. The Lord wanted me to serve churches in different nations. And so for the last almost 27 years I've been traveling all over to the places where the Lord opens the door for me to minister. And so my main, let's call it, service is to the body of Christ. Uh, let's say, my pastor, that we have a lot of impact for the new fest that we have to do with the new fest, the new fest of the Borive. We are not going to be the first fest of the fest of the I believe that every feast that the Lord gave to Moses served a purpose. It served a different purpose in the Old Testament, and I believe it also serves another purpose in the New Testament for the Christians in the world. And that, for me, in my understanding, is to celebrate the person of Jesus Christ. For example, the Feast of Passover, which in Hebrew is Pesach, it is about a transition passing over from, for them it was from slavery to freedom. For us is from death to life through faith in Jesus Christ. So every feast has its own fulfillment in Jesus Christ, through Jesus Christ. And as we celebrate the feast, we celebrate the person of Jesus and in that context that the feast reveals. Pra, ti beson se të gjitha festat originale të Zotit që Zotit ja dha mojësiut janë përmbushur në personin e Jezus Krishtit. Për shembul, si u përmbush dita e e trumpetave, pra festa e boribeve, që ne po flasim sot, pikërish në personin e Jezus Krishtit? The Feast of Trumpets, which in Hebrew is called Yom Trua, is very interesting in that in the Bible there is very little written about it, and so... It's 
also very interesting that until today in Israel there are many people who do not even know that this is a celebration that was given to Moses as the Feast of Trumpets. They only know this particular time as Rosh Hashanah, which is the beginning of the new Hebrew year, because the two are together in one, in the modern Israel, the modern state of Israel. Now, the other feasts, they had more particular descriptions, more clear descriptions, but not the Feast of Trumpets. And I've been praying about it through the years to understand it more. And I believe the Lord led me to understand this particular principle. The people in the Old Testament could not grasp the message simply because the revelation that is in the feast was not available to the people in the Old Testament. And what is that? In the New Testament, Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice. This was not available to people in the Old Testament because Jesus had not yet died on the cross, mm -hmm. had not yet atoned for the sins of mankind, which means no human prior to the resurrection of Jesus could have become the temple of the Holy Spirit and a child of God. And the voice of the Lord directly in the heart of a person can only be through the Holy Spirit. So it's only in the New Testament that that could be fulfilled. Now the trumpet is symbolic of a variety of things and all of them hold true on the Feast of Trumpets. The first of all is the voice of the Lord goes forth like a trumpet from heaven. Another one is when the people of God are in trouble, they blow the shofar to summon the presence of the Lord like in a battle. The shofar is also associated with the falling of the walls of the enemy strongholds, such as in the case of Joshua in Jericho. So all of these things have fulfillment in our lives in that we want to hear the voice of the Lord and we have the capacity to do that by the Holy Spirit in that we are called to cry out to the Lord to bring His presence, to bring His response in times of need, but also there are strongholds in our lives which need to be brought down for us to enjoy freedom completely, for us to be able to, to use the biblical terminology, to possess our promised land, which is not any specific land to step in and take over a parcel of land, but it is our lives, how can we experience the kingdom of God in our life? So mm -hmm. if I have to look at my promised land, I start looking at my own life, my body and my life. How can I in my life experience the presence and the glory and the power and the full manifestation of the kingdom of God? Is the festa theater in Israel, Rosh Hashanah? What is the calendar in Hebrew? When the Jews came back from the exile in Babylon, they brought with them some of the Babylonian traditions and that was the calendar in terms of the timing in the year. So only in the modern state of Israel they began to use the Day of Trumpets as the new Hebrew year which was according to the Babylonian calendar because the day that the Lord gave to Moses for the start of the year was in the spring. I'm not going to go into those details, but in Israel they actually have four different calendars. Mm -hmm. So the one starting in the spring is the religious calendar, and then the one starting on the Day of Trumpets, the Rosh Hashanah, which means the head of the year, is the political calendar. Now the years that they count, the numbering of the years, I believe it, they go back to when God spoke to Moses. So. This year's Rosh Hashanah is turning the calendar into the year 5,785. I would like to start by saying that we can find scriptural support to say that we do not celebrate the feasts of the Old Testament. That can be a strong theological point based on the scriptures. 
and we can use, for example, the teaching of Paul in Colossians 2, where it clearly speaks against celebrating the things of the Old Testament, the things of the law. But that is a very superficial approach because Paul himself, Apostle Paul, continues to say, seek the things which are above. And when we miss the continuation of his thinking, we think that we simply do not need to celebrate the Old Testament feasts. Mm -hmm. But when you see it in the fullness of the context of what he was communicating to us and what the Bible is communicating to us, then what we see is this. To explain it, let's think of the celebration of the resurrection of Jesus. Okay, that's an example. There are many people who celebrate the resurrection of Jesus without even believing in Jesus as their own God. It can be a religious celebration. So the Passover, the Pesach, the Pascha, can be a religious celebration without any substance. Well, if that's a religious celebration, sorry, I don't care to celebrate religious celebrations. But if I want to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus because He is my Lord, because He is alive and because I worship Him, if I want to celebrate the substance of the Passover, the Pesach, the Pascha, then mm -hmm. it's not a religious celebration anymore. It's a time of an encounter, of a meeting, like birthday. You invite the family, you invite the friends, and you have a wonderful celebration, not out of tradition or religion, because you want to have a good time with the family. So the feasts were not given for the purpose of empty, traditional, religious celebrations. They were given to be times of encounter, times of celebration, but just like in a family, not a traditional ritualistic celebration, and I hope that answers your question. A ke mësuar, Pastor George, përgjat viteve, përgjat ecjes me Zotin, se si ta aplikosh në jetën të mde parimet biblike? Yes, I think this is the first task that every Christian needs to focus on, how to apply the law in our lives. Now, talking about the law, one can think of the law in religious, legalistic terms. But if you think of the law in the sense of experiencing in my own life that which the Lord gave us to be an expression of His heart, then we stop seeing the law as religion and as legalism, and we see an effort, maybe I should say a duty on our part, to manifest in our own lives that which was given to us as a law that it could teach us the ways of God. I can be very specific. Mm -hmm. When the Bible says you shall not lie, that is not a legalistic religious requirement. I have to be transformed into a person that does not lie. When the law teaches me the greatest commandment, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, that's not a religious requirement. I have to be transformed into one who loves God with all that I am. When the Ten Commandments include, you shall not desire the wife of your neighbor, you shall not commit adultery. It's not a religious thing, it's an actual practice in real life. I do not want to desire any other woman than my own wife. So it's an expression of the heart of God which I put to practice in my real life. Pastor George, edhe si një mësue si fjallës së Zotit, a ka diçka që Zotit ka folur në zemër kohët e fundit? I believe every Christian is called to have an ongoing revelation of the good will of the Lord for our everyday lives. I think it's a response to the call of Jesus that we should seek the kingdom of God first and foremost. So if I seek the Lord every day, and for every new season, then I know what the Lord is saying, I know what the Lord wants of me, because it's formed in my heart. So, to be specific now about this particular season, I can take you back to the end of July, when I felt that the Lord was inviting me and the people of our ministry to dedicate all of the month of August to seek His face 
in preparation of a major transition that would come in September, around the middle of September. So we spent August focused on drawing near the Lord, praying for more of revelation, dedicating to Him every day, worshiping and everything. Then when we got into September, we knew the fire was heating up and the first week of September things became more intense in terms of seeking the Lord, waiting on Him. After the first week the Lord spoke very clearly and mm -hmm. He said to me that there will be a new beginning, there will be a transition into a new season and in this new season many new things will be birthed mm -hmm. and I believe that probably this very interview we are having here is one of those new things that are being birthed in this new season. It's not wise for me to tell you, but there have been another four major, let me call them, births in my life mm -hmm. over the last few days. And uh, the other thing that the Lord showed me clearly uh, during that first week of September when the vision was formed about the transition in the process of the month of September, the Lord showed me that He will reveal Himself again as the Lord who heals, particularly because many people, including Christians, have been suffering a lot, especially since COVID. There are many health issues around. And the other thing the Lord also clearly told me is that He wants to give answers to people who have been crying out for answers and they have not been receiving them, that this would be a season of open heaven for people to receive answers. Mm -hmm. But what we would need to do is to draw near God so that He can draw near us, as James says in his epistle. And I could tell you far more in terms of things related to church and strategy, but they are not for this interview. Oh. Lëm di Zotit për ato që farë përëndijat ka komunikuar dhe mbesoj forëse, po Zotit do të shfaqe dhe do të përgjigjit atyre që e kërkojnë. Duk e qënë pastor se je në një shërbes profetika, beson se jemi në kohët e fundit. I do not want to offend anyone and there are many who believe that Jesus is coming any time now. And I understand that. At the same time, the Bible calls end times, the times of Jesus and since then. So we have been in the end times now for about 2,000 years. It's in the Bible, the mm -hmm. end times. Now, some people then will say, well, we are at the ending of the end times. And I understand what they mean, and I don't want to say, no, we're not. I do not want to say, well, I don't think Jesus is not coming back anytime soon. But what I can say is this. We see many prophecies in the Bible that have been fulfilled but we see prophecies which have not been fulfilled. So the question is, if every prophecy is to be fulfilled, and there are prophecies which have not been fulfilled yet, then can Jesus return before those prophecies have been fulfilled? So I actually wrote a book, and it's now seven years actually since I wrote it, in which I am talking about the biblical prophecies which have not yet been fulfilled. There is one particular prophecy, and I'm not, I can't go into depth because then goes, that goes into biblical teaching. We cannot do it here, but there are specific words in the Bible which indicate mm -hmm. that the coming of the Lord will be, let's put it this way, in this millennium, except we are in the start of this millennium and nobody knows when, but let me tell you one of the prophecies which comes out indirectly through the scriptures, because it's not clearly in the scriptures, but you can see it clearly when you look at the big picture. When Jesus comes back, there will be no hostility in the Middle East between the Jews and the Arab neighbors, because there will be a highway from Egypt to Assyria, as Isaiah says in chapter 19, and in that chapter, God calls Egypt my people and other details which I will not explain. So what I'm saying is there will be peace in the Middle East and Israel will be celebrated by its neighbors. 
therefore we are very far from that moment, therefore I expect Jesus will come back, he is coming back soon, but that is after the prophecies have been fulfilled. Mm -hmm. Pastor, në përfundim të kësa intervista, do të kishet një mesaj për kishën shqiptare? I believe the Albanian church does need a lot of encouragement and I will have to explain something. It's not only in Albania, it's in every nation when the gospel first goes in. God works with supernatural power, miracles, wonders, healings and everything is so easy. The churches start easily because God is on the move like a tsunami that's coming and covering the land. But then after a season, the church now begins to grow into maturity. And when the maturing process comes, there are many who resist change. There are many who are unwilling to grow. And regrettably, there can be people even in leadership who never grew in maturity in the first place because they became leaders when they themselves were children in Christ. So I think the church in Albania, and I believe this to be true all over the ex-communist nations, the church in Albania needs to understand there was a focus, and many are still trying to keep the focus where it was. But the focus of the Lord now is in holiness, mm -hmm. as in growing in maturity, and the requirements are different. And so the encouragement, if I wanted to limit it, and it cannot be limited, but if I wanted to limit it, then I would say two things the church in Albania needs to understand, the fatherhood of God, and the church in Albania needs to understand that without the prophetic vision and voice, people perish. Mm -hmm. Pastor, shumë faleminderit për këtë, për këtë intervist, dhe shumë bekime për ty. Thank you for inviting me, and I hope and pray that it will bear good fruit. Faleminderit. Ishte një bekimi madhë në fakt të ndajmë të Koso Bashku. Unë falenderit uftuarit për kontributin e tyre, ju shikues të dashur për vëmëndjen edhe për kushtimin që keni ndaj familja 7. Ju rojë një fundjath me pache dhe shumë gëzim. Takojemi të shtunën arshme.